what actually we have to do today is uh, first of all we have to give a recap we have to revise the class that we discussed in the last class so I would just like some of you to please uh, help me out so who is going to speak first who is going to bell the cat yes just explain holofrains it's modern linguistic meaning within a word that can carry a meaning such as un in break and able in unbreaking. You will un in unbreaking. He said that I think that it's not like right. key. This was more key. Yes, yes, sir. Before uh, you know explaining what hollow phrase is, we basically talked about what morpheme is and what lexeme is. So since we are going to talk about lexical development, I explained that what actually a lexeme is. And what actually a morpheme is? Lexeme, in fact, is a word. Whereas, as far as morpheme is concerned, I gave you that example of unbreakable. It is one word, it's one lexeme, but it has three morphemes in it. Break is a morpheme, able is a morpheme, right? So, breakable. So, I tried to explain how basically we can differentiate these two. So, hollow phrase. Okay, yes. Anybody else? So actually it is a statement uh, and it develops in a very child who takes uh, up to 18 months when a child is able to produce a single word it is called a hollow phrase just like um, um, you can take this example but basically it is a stage where uh, uh, when a child is able to produce a single word Okay everybody else, still not clear, still not clear the child use one word to convey the full sentence or the full sentence. The child use one word to convey the full sentence or the full meaning. For example, uh, they learn the word mama. So if, if they are pointing towards that also, they will also use the word mama for the smartphone. This is what this is. Basically, I think uh, the idea still needs to be uh, to get a mature form, right? Hollow phrase is basically whole phrase. It is, a, it is also called one word stage. It basically usually it starts at the uh, age of 18 months. Now, this idea that this uh, stage starts at the age of 18 months, it was basically given by Burko in somewhere in the 1960s. Now, uh, maybe the date is different. Maybe uh, children they start on the first stage, maybe at 10 months. Maybe at 12 months, but we need to conduct a study. And secondly, uh, this this result that we have in front of us, it is not for the Pakistani context. It is for the English context. Like their children at that time, they will start this stage at age 18 months. So age is not clear. We cannot say that it is 18 months. No, in our context, uh, you know, in Pakistan, as far as the you know uh, official statistics are concerned. 78 languages are spoken in Pakistan. Now, out of those 78, it means there are at least 78 regions, ethnicities. So, there are children, there are studies across uh, cultural theorists have proved that all the children, when they develop their language, uh, their language develops and it varies from child to child. It's not uh, standard that yes, children, they can develop language equally and accordingly, not at all. Children, they have their individual differences in different uh, you know, languages, different cultures, different ethnicities, different regions, so anyhow. So, what actually is the uh, you know, time period here? Mostly, they write 18 months, but we, we are not scored the idea 18 months until we conduct the proper study in the context of Pakistan. So, anyhow, holophrastic stage, Mr. Habib, basically is that it is, a, it is one word stage, and that one word basically explains the whole phrase. For example, when a child, yes, and at the same time, <clears throat> this stage is ambiguous also because for parents, it's not easy to figure out what actually the child wants to say. For example, child may be saying juice. Now, it has multiple meanings. I need a juice, I spill the juice, or there is no juice, or maybe there is something else we can't figure out at the moment. Similarly, when a child uses the word mom, now see, as I told you, uh, in different contexts, in different ethnicities, in Punjab and uh, Sindh, 
when a child says mum it means liquid it means most probably water but if a child in the context of kp have a kafafa if a child says mum it does not mean liquid it means solid so that is basically uh, the holophrastic stage and the understanding of those uh, that, that one word stage what actually the child wants to say so when the child is saying mom for example and let's consider the meaning of mom here is water so when it rains it's mom when uh, the child passes by a river that is mom whenever the child is thirsty child needs mom so <laughs> what and how parents they can figure it out that of course we need to find out yes so what is the next stage selecting the two words stage next stage yes. is the two, two words stage. stage after the child passes the first stage then child proceeds to two words stage i mean from one word to two two words, two words stage now uh, what have the english people yes Sorry, uh, actually I'm interrupting you, but I was saying that this is meaning in the meetings. Oh, I'm sorry. Done. 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 Okay. So uh, two words stage now. According to these people, from 24 months onwards, like when the child is two years old, but I tell you in our context, if a child is two years old. Uh, speaks properly, yes. and you know we need to conduct new studies. Uh, it is very much required in the context of Pakistan and Britain. So two words. Here, what happens? Children, uh, what they do? Subject verb, subject complement, subject object, or verb object maybe. Now at two word stage, children they use key words. they use keywords key and they delete they omit uh grammatical function words now can anybody explain to me what these grammatical function words are anyone yes basically what are these Number one, uh, you can say auxiliary. Yes, you can call determiners. Maybe prepositions. Or let's say, alumos. So someone else also wants to join it. Alumos, and uh, then we can add affixes. Okay. Now, for example, uh, when the child develops language, okay. So children, it is not possible for them to go for you know present and then past and, and, and things like that. They basically learn one word and they try to apply that one word for present, for past, for future, and whatever they want to say in the, in the context of that word. So two word stage. Number one, first of all, children. Either they say subject verb. For example, Baba drive. That's it. It means Baba is driving the car. Baba has driven the car, or whatever uh, we can think of in this context. Then uh, subject plus complement. Does anyone know what is what is a complement? In 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 grammar, so not the noun. Yes, so actually it is uh, addition part of something that complete the meaning. No, yeah. anybody else? Yeah. Just a bit, not the noun. I'm just coming back to you in a while. Yes, what is a complement in grammar? See, in English language, there are three structures: S V O, S V A, A is addition here, yes. and S V C, subject verb. complement what is that complement uh we use complement with the linking verb so the linking verb is is am are right and then when you are making some less dogmatic sentences such as uh seem feel after this we use a complement the complement can be either an adjective or 
a noun. For example, I am a teacher. So I is uh, subject, uh, subject, am is verb, a teacher is a compliment. She is happy. Here happy is a compliment and it's adjective. So a child may say, she happy, right? Like subject and compliment. Subject and object, for example, mama food means either mama is eating food or mama is cooking food or mama is putting food. So something related to that is there. And verb and object, for example, cooking food or cook food like that. So this is basically called the two-word stage. And here mostly we omit the grammatical function words. These are these words, okay? And keywords are used in order to explain what the child actually wants to say. After this starts the three-word stage, or it is also called the telegraphic stage. Again, in this way, now some of the uh, theorists and writers and uh, you know the theorists of child language development they also they talk about this stuff at the third stage now why and most of them most of them they are of the view that in the telegraphic stage children they omit grammatical function words why how still they cannot make those past tense here one very important point maybe i skipped last time english language it has some of its part as a regular language. For example, wash, washed, washed, call, called, called. You see, talk, talk, talked. There is regularity. But a major part of this is irregular. But the languages where we live in, almost all our languages are irregular. There is no element of regularity. Very, 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 very few items you might find. For example, in Pashto, uh, for example, when you say, for a dog, we use the word spay. spay and plural is speed. speed. For uh, girl, we use the word jine and plural which is jine ke. Huh? Jine ke. Jine ke. No. Uh, there is in the pattern of speed as well, I think. Mm -hmm. for, for, a, for a woman, what do you say? Yes. Khaza. Huh? Khaza. And khazi. plural is khazi. Khazi. So khazi. see, spay, speed, khaza, khazi. This is regularity. But it's not up to that level. For example, in Punjabi, in Sindhi, in Potwari, Pahari, you can check how many verbs, how many nouns are regular. For example, in English, man, men. But see, chair, chairs, uh, podium, podiums, door, doors, fan, fans. You see, uh, marker, markers, cap, caps. You see, these are regular. But then, majority of the uh, nouns we have, they are irregular. Fine, but in our languages, you, you just find out some regular words, some regular nouns, if you can. That would be good, it would be good study on our part. And again, we can see how our children are developing language. So in the telegraphic stage, basically again, how in the old times, we used to send, you know, telegraphs. So every word would post. So therefore, grammatical function words, they were deleted. Prepositions, they were deleted. Okay, so children, they speak like that. Father, home, now. Mean father has just arrived home. Or father has come home now. So the grammatical function words are deleted in the telegraphic stage. Okay. And next I think we talked about uh, regularization. Huh? Yes, but let, let's complete this one first. Regularization. What is regularization? Sesh, Lima. In English language, children at the early stages, they learn regular patterns in nouns, in verbs. But see, again, there are irregular groups, there are irregular nouns. So whenever they are using irregular verbs and nouns, they are also regularizing them. For example, if uh, bad is bats, ball is balls, door is doors, so man is man's, and fan is fans. So then again, uh, after three years or after 30 months, 
they start learning the regularities of the language. Then again, there is a concept of over regularization. Here, when they have a, an irregular past, so they try to make it again regular past. For example, when, when did we find, and particularly in the Pakistani context, there are some words. See, keep, keep, and its noun is keeper. You say wicked keeper? Yes. And most of the people, they, they say keepering. However, it is keeping. Drive, driver, driving. So we are even over regularizing things. For children, for example, in this context, once they get to know child, children, maybe they are using the word children's. So at times we are moving for the over regularization of this, uh, of the lexemes that our children are studying. Now, children learning lexemes. It is almost equal to a person who is learning a second language when that person is unknown of the rules of that language. Okay, then uh, talking about uh, a semantic development. In this one, uh, for example, what is under extension? Quickly, let's find out. So that we start the next uh, lecture. Syntactic development, yes. What is under extension? So when a child refers to everything from the same perspective, like uh, under extension. Yes, sir. Hmm. It is under extension. What? Like when a child refers to everything from one point. For example. For example, you can take example. Like if a child is just using S with every noun just to make it smoother. No, so no, 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 no. So they learn very good example. Yes, Bashif. So they learn a word and then uh, underextend it. For example, uh, if a child is having a cat in his house, and if, if he see a cat outside his house, he will say, no, this is not a cat. Mm. The cat which is in my house, that is the real cat. Under, yeah, like a child learns a word and its meanings are underextended. The child gives narrow meanings to a word. For example, if this is a duster in the class, this is a duster, and child comes and uh, has a look at it, that yes, it is a duster. If this kind of thing he finds out outside this room, he will say, no, this is not duster. Duster is there. You bring a child to this university, you tell a child, see, this is university, and then take him to another university and say, it's a university. No, 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 no. That is university. This is not university. One item and one name. That's it. That name cannot be attributed to another item. Right? And if it is so, if it is so, then it is not under extension. It means the child is going beyond this stage. Then again, uh, overextension. What is overextension? So so actually, uh, in over uh, in over extension, we a uh, child used to uh, over extend the meaning of a word uh, which he used. For example, for example, if uh, like you said, uh, you given the you have given the example of university. If we uh, bring a child here and we say that it's university, and then uh, uh, take him to another university, and then he over generalizes it actually that. That, uh, that according to the aspect that uh, there are classes and there are departments and, and when he sees the classes and departments there he is in somebody new who hasn't spoken yet the last man standing is sitting no? okay over extension Ruj, would you like to say? Um, so I don't know exactly but uh, I think that for example uh, he, he is there and he said this is university and mm -hmm. then we yeah, maybe taking to hospital, people also then say that this is also university. Okay. Like, over extension, over extension. Again, let me explain again to you people. Over extension is when a child over extends the meanings of a word and the object. How? Uh, for example, uh, four wheels, four legs, four wheels, vehicle and uh, small in height, not large in height. 
small that is a car so all cars with four all vehicles with four wheels and with small right gear cars whether it is pajero whether it is suv whether it is whatever that is a car second example uh, i give an example of ball a round shape entity or object is ball now you eat peas balls you eat uh, grains oats balls you look at the moon ball why because child finds out one attribute in that object and wherever that attribute the child finds out says it is the same for example if a child has an uncle an uncle has you know uh, big mustache and beard and bold so anybody outside who has you know uh, big mustache beard and is bold uncle 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 you see all those people or all those things who are having the same for example a dog having long ears so all the animals having long ears will be dogs Uh, a dog having four legs, for example, if four leg is the standard, so all those animals with the same height having four legs is a dog. Most of you, for example, how many of you have lived in cities, not in villages? In city all the time, okay, city all the time. Now those people who have lived in cities all the time, at times they cannot differentiate between a cow and a buffalo. Yes, it is. Huh? Why? Because they're tall stuff. With long, uh, you know, with legs, four legs. Oh, sometimes that is a cow. Sometimes that is. Even they are unable to differentiate between sheep, goat, and lamb. Right. So these these in fact are the differences. So this overextension and underextension, it is not necessarily dependent or limited to these people, children, even for us. You see, right now in the parking, you see all our cars. We all have got cars. There are different types and categories of vehicles. We don't know them, and when we don't know them, a single attribute is taken, and accordingly we.